वेलकम फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर अतुल ढाले प्रोफेसर इन प्रोडक्शन इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट फ्रॉम डीजे संघवी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग मुंबई विल सी हेयर द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ द ग्रीन हाउस गैसेस फॉर द ऑयन एंड स्टील प्रोडक्शन फर्स्ट विल सी दट यू मीन बाय द कार्बन फुटप्रिंट कार्बन फुटप्रिंट इज अ कैलकुलेशन ऑफ द कॉस्ट ऑफ अ प्रोडक्ट इन द ग्रांड्स ऑफ सी वो टू सो फॉर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट हाउ मच द ग्रांड्स ऑफ सी वो टू इमिशन इज दैर दैट इज द कार्बन फुटप्रिंट नाउ देर आर नंबर ऑफ फैक्टर्स इन्वॉल्व इन दिस नाउ इफ यू टेक अ जस्ट सिंपल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द बॉटल ऑफ द शैम्पू सो वॉट आर द डिफरेंट फैक्टर्स द ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज इन्वॉल्व इन द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द प्लास्टिक पैकेजिंग प्लास्टिक फिल्म यूज टू रैप द बॉटल when they are transported on a pallet definitely you required energy and produces the greenhouse gases the ingredients in the shampoo itself and even the energy used to heat the water so whether we which factors we should consider or not and that is given by the iso 14067 so this 14060 this is the complete family of iso and which provides the clarity and consistency for quantifying monitoring reporting and validating or verifying the greenhouse gas emission and the removal to support the sustainable development through the low carbon economy so these are the different iso standards of this 14060 family so 14064142 and 3 this gives a the complete description i will not go much in detail because we have to finish within a uh, 12 minutes so this is the relationship between the iso 1460 family and this is the relationship between the document and standard beyond the greenhouse gases management family of the standards so first again we should know what do you mean by the greenhouse gases the gases constitute of the atmosphere both the natural and anthropogenic that absorbs and emits the radiation at a specific wavelength within the spectrum of the infrared radiation emitted by the earth surface the atmosphere and the cloud the most significant greenhouse gases are the water vapor carbon dioxide methane and the nitrous oxide according to the environmental protection agency while the oxygen is the second most abundant gas in our atmosphere it does not absorb the thermal infrared radiation now why i have chosen this iron and steel production the reason is if you see the year on year growth of the co2 emission and the dominant sector in the manufacturing sector it is the iron and steel industry you can see the lower most the red color part which is almost the 30 to 40 percent um, uh, creation of this co2 emission it is due to this iron and uh, steel industry so this shows you the different different uh, state how the emission and the top 15 states in india so you can see the my at the first one it is the gujarat odisha then chatisgarh jharkhand karnataka and maharashtra where this iron and steel industries are there this graph shows you the again the how the uh, co2 uh, emission as goes on increasing according to the per capita and the per unit gdp and you can say it is goes on increasing only here in this there is a interesting information that co2 emission it is mainly or you can say the most impactful it is due to the coal in manufacturing industry so other fuels have the less effect on this co2 emission but the coal is having the maximum one so definitely we have to look after this so when you consider the iron and steel production there there are two different methods for calculating the co2 emission the the first one is the quantity of reducing agent and the blast furnace additives used as well as the quantity of the carbonate fluxes introduced into the furnace and the second one is the amount of iron or steel produced as well as the carbonate fluxes so directly uh, it is uh, related to the amount of iron so emission calculation from either method can be adjusted to the account of the export of the carbon bearing by the product so here in this diagram you can see how the uh, iron and steel get 
manufactured or this is the production process you can see here there is a raw material which is iron ore then the coal injection then this is the coal then coke oven by products and then this this is the input for the different different furnaces and here this is the you can see the blast furnace and then this blast furnace gives the some part of the speed iron casting and some part goes to the basic oxygen furnace and then it goes to the steel refining facility and again from this side there is a electric arc furnace so at every stage there is a emission of greenhouse gases so you can see here in this schematic diagram at every stage there is a, you can see the co2 ch4 and 2 o here in this sinter plant then in the blast furnace again there is a greenhouse gases here in this uh, steel make so everywhere and it is very impactful so definitely and as we have seen whenever we are using the coal that again increases the co2 emission so for calculation we required this we, we should know what is the ties which we are using now generally some values which are globally uh, accepted some values it is maybe country wise and some value it is at the local level so that that's why this uh, tires it is classified into three tire one which we use the globally then the tire two which is uh, more specific than the tire one so it may be uh, some specific countries and the tire three it is very specific the tire methods require the facility specific data such as the composition of the fuel uh, combusted at the facility or at a specific type of technology employed at the facility so as, now again how to calculate this co2 and ch4 there is a difference in calculation of when we calculate the co2 and ch4 the co2 emissions are largely determined by the carbon content of the consumed material and the co2 emissions are best determined using the material balance approach that tracks the flow of the carbon through the industrial process whereas for the ch4 and n2o the emissions are much more influenced by the combustion or emission control technologies employed by the industrial apparatus and also the ch4 emissions are best determined using the equipment or process specific emission it is not related to the material right so now in iron and steel industry the which are the processes so mainly uh, stationary combustion uh, under this stationary consumption there is a electricity generation or the capitative power plant boilers reheating furnaces meal sections coke production and the flaring and the industrial process emission there is a sintered making felting iron and steel making and direct reduce iron for production and the third one is the limestone and dolomite production so for all this how to calculate this co2 see in next seven eight slides this gives you all the details but i cannot go through each and every point i will just give show you the equations so emission from the electricity generation and reading see this is for the stationary one so this equation one gives you the total annual fuel consumption then fuel carbon content of the heating values so this equation three again converting carbon content factors from a mass volume mass or volume basis to the energy basis uh, then this calculation of co2 emission calculate this equation 4 gives you the calculation of co2 emission equation 5 calculating the co2 emission from the stationary combustion sources using the carbon content data exposed to the energy then this now this is for the ch4 and you know x equation number 6 equation number then see this table this is for the tire 3 what are what are the material which you are using for uh, this and then accordingly that material and the basic technology you will get this value you, sub, you can substitute that value in that equation even in the emission from the coal making we can see this equation number 7 equation number 8 and this table from this you will get the different values of the carbon content then the ch4 for calculating this equation you can use this equation number 9 then emission from the flaring you can use this equation number 10 calculation of ch4 for this flaring you can use the equation number 11 so this, this that up to equation number 11 this is the part of the uh, stationary one then the industrial process emission sintered production you can use this equation 12 13 all this equation gives you the co2 emission the ch4 emission for the different different uh, processes and this tables see whatever the table it is given these are all the standard values you can because this values you required in 
the different equations which I have shown you from equation 1 to equation 20, you can substitute that and you can calculate. Then the sustainability of this iron and steel production. So how will it become the sustainable? So if uh, India is a developed country and uh, we have a scope to develop it, we don't have the new technology. So definitely the those who are industry, the, they can take the uh, new technologies from the developed countries and they can use it. So definitely again, this uh, uh, iron and steel is a most recyclable product. So if we use this recyclable as it is 100%, so definitely we can achieve the sustainable manufacturing. Life cycle assessment report suggests that every ton of steel scrap, we save over 1400 kg of the iron, 740 kg of the coal and 120 kg of the limestone. So again, for an average of the production, one ton of the steel result in 200 to 400 kg of the byproduct. This includes the slag, dust, sludge, other materials. Byproduct today are integral part of the business and its recycling provides the significant benefits like reducing the landfill waste, decrease in uh, carbon dioxide emission and preservation, natural capital. So steel industries are invested in research and technology. So definitely we can reduce the energy consumption per ton 60% weight by mini steel applications and 40%. So environmental definitely we can reduce that and again the water footprint we use in this industry the uh, more water for descaling and uh, uh, dust scrubbing so this if we use reuse that water and return to the resource so definitely and again in the global best practice zero effluent discharge we can use the cyanide bacteria for the treatment of the waste water in the plant on the on site for power generation so by this way i hope definitely we can move towards the sustainable manufacturing of the iron and steel industry and we can reduce the carbon footprint over it thank you very much friends for listening